Hello, this is Mike from Windows7Forms.com. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the release of ESET Smart Security 5 and ESET Nod32 Antivirus 5. But if the past gives us any indication, ESET Nod32 and ESET Smart Security will be powerful programs that will protect your system using minimal resources, uh, competing with the best of them, and far superior uh, to other applications in that area. So we're here at the download section. All you need to go here is eset.com. Click on obviously download and go and choose your version. But let's go and see what uh, Smart Security 5 is all about. So we're going to go ahead and run eset Smart Security Live. We're going to run that now. You're going to see this big robot face. This big robot face is sort of the uh, trademark of all ESET products at this point in time. It always has been, except over the years, the robot's gotten more and more refined, which is kind of creepy in a way. Let's continue on and go to, through the install process. And as you can see, we're done here. We accept the end user license agreement. And it's important to mention that early versions of ESET, including Smart Security 4 as well as Not32, for we're based on the Kaspersky engine, but their improvisation on the Kaspersky engine is what made them so great. What you want to look at here is uh, whether or not you want to try to detect potentially unwanted applications, and uh, they're usually uh, they usually require user consent before installation. It can include adware, utilities, and rootkits, and I usually always say yes to this. Sorry, when I don't want that, I turn it off but I, I keep it on by default. And the basic installation here is not going to take very long at all. I fully endorse this software. I am a Microsoft Certified Information Technology Professional, a Microsoft Certified Systems Administrator, a Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist, a Microsoft Certified Professional, CompTIA Network Plus uh, Certified, CompTIA A Plus Certified, and I'm Cross Loop Certified. I've also worked in the public sector and the private sector. And I'm looking at smart security now to take a gander at what this new security suite looks like. And I see program modules are being updated. Why is maximum protection not insured? Well, that's because we have to go ahead and restart our computer. We're back from our reboot. And as you can see, ESET smart security is online and ready to go. It runs automatically and the menu has been streamlined. It looks quite beautiful here. We have a license that is still valid because we purchased the set smart security for and that is something that uh, that people should consider because I've had a license for four I recently renewed it and they never have a problem giving you the next version of the software whether it was three to four or four to five they always allow you to go ahead and upgrade. Now, VMware Workstation, that's a whole different ball of wax. They just came out with a new version that supports Windows 8 uh, pre-release builds, uh, and they charge $99 for that upgrade. And Randy Baker, our CCNA over at Windows7Forms.com can attest to having to upgrade to the new version of VMware Workstation, uh, as well as myself. So we take a look at this and you're going to see some new features. For one, you've got parental controls. That's the big one that we see here. And you can define some new parental controls, all right, and base it on child, teenager, or parent, okay? And let's take a look at what that does exactly. If we, if we use the role of child, you can block all sorts of stuff automatically, okay? These are websites based on criminal activity. You can block search engines, proxies, alcohol and tobacco. Uh, this is just web page content filtering. Then you can go to block and allowed content and you have a list where you can choose the web pages themselves. So for parental controls, um, this is very good and a lot of uh, parents may want to take advantage of this feature right away. But I, for one, uh, don't have kids. If I did, I would think that this was great because it expands upon the parental control service uh, that came with Windows 7 and makes it rock solid even better. 
so I'm very happy with that. And of course, you can go back to uh, some of the defaults, I believe. But we'll go ahead and set parent right here. And we'll set parent right here for Mike. Now you can disable parental controls altogether. Now you have some options under tools, but let's go here and just look at home. We can look at statistics, number of cleaned objects, number of infected objects, etc. This is simply antivirus and anti spyware. You know, file system protection, email client protection, web access protection and email client anti-spam protection. Now for computer can scans, we can do a smart scan. And this is with default settings for all local disks, automatically cleans threats. A custom scan can be used to just simply, see if we wanted to simply scan the operating memory of the computer or scan a certain drive of the computer, we certainly can. And we can scan without cleaning automatically. We can use a certain profile. An in-depth scan would be the most detailed scan. It would take quite a while. Um, and it would take uh, use advanced heuristics, use all sorts of different devices uh, to, uh, to meet its objective. And that's really where this software shines, I've got to say. It's got the best, best in the wild detection. So even if you don't have the latest virus definitions, you'll still be able to detect viruses and threats against your system. You can see our setup here, and we have computer settings, real-time system protection. We can disable any of these at any time. Uh, HIPS, this is a new functionality. And this is a self-defense of the host intrusion protection system. That's to prevent root kits. It's a very powerful function that has been added in this version. You have the ability to add, to enable gamer mode, and gamers will love this. What this does is that it disables almost everything so that your uh, installation of software or your running of a game won't be hindered by the power of this great detection model. We can go and look at log files, and you'll see that I've had threats over time that have been uh, term threats. Registry Booster at one time was seen as a threat, but it's not. But we've seen a variant of a Trojan. We've seen Java exploits. These have come from different websites, include, including uh, some Fox uh, phishing websites here, dyndns.pro. Never go to that site. It's not a real website whatsoever. It is a phishing site. We can watch activity here, and this is great because we don't need diagnostic software to do it. We can see file system activity, how much is being used, file system activity graph, and we're doing that every one second, and we're seeing how much is being written and read from the disk. Ready? We can do a scheduler, and with the scheduler, we can schedule automatic updates, automatic scans, we already have an automatic startup scan for file checking. We have a regular automatic update, and we can pretty much do a detailed scan whenever we want to just jump into this uh, utility and go here. We can also look at running processes, and this is really useful. Let's go ahead and see how this thing works. We have a risk level assessment. We have application name. We get information from their database. And what does this say here? Number of users, how long ago it was used, when it was discovered. So it, and you see something like this Acro tray. Now this is Adobe Acrobat, and it gets a high risk level because Acrobat is constantly, uh, they have constantly find vulnerabilities with Acrobat, and they're constantly patched. And that's simply the truth. And so it's telling you the truth here. It's not, you know, they're not working with Adobe to say, hey, you know, we're going to, you know, we're not going to put you on our risk list. They say, screw that. No, we're going to put you on our risk list because your software is risky. And it's the truth. We see security alerts for their software all the time. Adobe is very good at patching them. But if you're running AcroTroy.exe, you should be very aware of the fact that Adobe Acrobat, um, in many cases, can be a security risk to your system.